Hey guys, this is Colin Moshman for CardsChat.com, and recently in the Cards Chat forums, we've had some requests that I'm pretty excited about, which is for some advanced nine-man sitting go content. I love the nine-man sitting go, and the topic we're going to look at today is shoving versus min raising on the bubble. And the examples will come from single table tournaments, because that's where this concept shines the most. But you can actually apply it pretty well to the bubble of multi-table sitting goes, of MTTs, or any spot where there's going to be pay jumps or a lot of risk aversion. So let's begin with the motivation behind this idea, which is ICM. ICM tells us that chips have independent values, and specifically the more chips that you earn in your stack, the less the dollar value of those chips. We might be the second chip leader in the bubble, have 25% equity in a nine man, and if we double from the chip leader, that's great. But there are still four players left, it's still possible that we're the bubble boy, and if we run the numbers, our equity maybe only has increased from 25% to 35%. And that means we need a huge edge to call off our stack. In this last example, we would need to win the all-in over 70% of the time for it to be profitable, because busting right then is such a disaster when we can fold and cruise into the money. And what this means is that fold equity is everything. The shover has all the power since he's the one who has fold equity, and the caller can only wait, hope to get dealt a strong hand, because if he calls it off too wide, he's just going to be spewing off equity and costing himself a lot in this game. So the equilibrium is that the player who can move all in does that, and only players with very strong hands call. So let's take a look at an example of this from the context of a double or nothing single table tournament. So the reason why I picked double or nothing is because the ICM is going to be even more extreme. And we have 200, 400 blinds, six equal stacks on the bubble of this double or nothing we can hit ICMIs, and what we see is that this first player in is supposed to shove all hands. Even shoving three deuce offsuit is very, very profitable. And I know this isn't pretty small font, but basically people can call him with a calling range of just aces for the next player over, and at widest queens plus. Nothing else is good enough to call off, and that is a tremendous gap between shoving and calling ranges. So the question we want to ask ourselves is how can we take advantage of this fact? How can we make this work for us? And the way to do that is against people who know what they're doing, we want to take the play away from them. We want to, in situations where it's the bubble, there's a high bubble factor, a lot of ICM, we want to just jam in, even for big effective stacks instead of min raising, because then we are the ones who have fold equity. We take the play away from them and we prevent them from doing anything unless they're dealt a very strong hand. So I want to take a look at an example of this, but first there's one important caveat, which is that you don't always want to do this. And against big stacks, unless you can cripple them if you jam into them and they lose, you just want to play tighter against them because we can threaten them. What we want is to threaten mid stacks, people that if they call or all in and lose, they'll be crippled. Another thing is that against weak recreational players, you normally just want to play your standard small ball game, come in with a lot of min raising, open limping in the small blind, because they're less likely to exploit that. So with that said, let's take a look at an example of min raising versus shoving in the nine man Senego. So here we have up a normal 50, 30, 20 payout structure, nine man Senego. We're in the small blind, we're the chip leader, and the big blind has a stack of 3,200 chips, so 20 big blinds. And typically at 20 big blinds in the small blind, we want to be doing little or no open shoving. It's too deep. We don't have a good risk reward ratio. But here, that's exactly the play that we want to be making because of the fact that the button only has a five blind stack. So the big blind is supposed to call extremely tight if we shove. So we can say, well, what if we were to min raise? So here, for example, we put in a small raise. And let's look at this from the big blind's perspective. So we can click the ICMIs button, and we see that the equilibrium is for the big blind to shove a third of hands over the small blind's min raise. So he can still play a third of hands, and actually it's worse than that for the small blind, because the big blind can still flat. This equilibrium does not take into account the fact that the big blind can just call play position against us. 
So we're leaving the big blind a lot of different options. What if instead, though, we just open shove 20 blinds? In that case, he has to call us super tight. We can now profitably shove any hand, three deuce offsuit is super profitable at about plus 0.6% of the prize pool. And the big blind can only call us with pocket tens or better. Even ace king is a fold because of this extreme risk reward situation. So again, against bad players who don't know what they're doing, you want to still take a more small ball approach here. But against good players, you want to leverage these stack situations, put them to the ultimate test, and shove in a lot of situations where you would otherwise be min raising. So that's going to end today's advanced nine man SNG concept. Thanks a lot for watching. This has been Colin Moshman for CardsChat.com.